Good evening and many thanks for joining us on The Big Story tonight. My name is Sharon Mamani. Now focus is on the education sector and boarding schools in particular following the horrendous rape incident at Moy Girls School, Nairobi last week. Days after the incident, several other cases of attempted rape in school have come to the fore, raising concern on the safety of students in boarding schools. Education Cabinet Secretary Amina Mohammed on Tuesday dissolved the board of management of Moy Girl School Nairobi and the school principal tendered her re request for early retirement, a request that was honored by the Teachers Service Commission. Among the actions taken on Moy Girl Schools is security reinforcement, even though there are not students in the institution at the moment. But even with the sweeping changes, stakeholders feel more needs to be done to, uh, to alleviate student security issues across the country. The Education CS opens the show tonight has uh, provided five armed security officers, policemen, that will be guarding uh, the school. The current board of management of Moy Girls School, Nairobi, is dissolved with immediate effect. An interim BOM comprising officials of the Ministry of Education and the Teacher Service Commission will be put in place immediately to oversee the management of the school until a substantive board is constituted. Right, and on the show tonight, I shall be speaking to Cooper Chairman and Emu Haya, Member of Parliament, Omboko Melema, and education expert Jonathan Wesaya, as well as children's rights activist Florence Machio from Equality Now, who is in our town centre studio. And many thanks, gentlemen and lady, for joining us for this all-important conversation tonight. And I would want to start with you, uh, Honorable Milemba. We have seen that the entire board has been sent home, the principal tendered her resignation, but many Kenyans are asking, we, this is coming right after that fire incident at the same school. How crucial is accountability and is this enough? What has been done so far at the school? Uh, thank you very much. I would uh, want to begin by one, standing with the Moy Girls uh, High School community, that is the teachers, the parents, and uh, the students during this time when uh, they are feeling low about what happened. I also want to stand with the family of the girls who were affected insofar as this incident was concerned. But moving forward then um, uh, is that uh, we have seen some steps taken by the CS Education, that's Amina Mohammed, and she has... Uh, uh, she has made uh, bold steps to dissolve the board of management and has also moved uh, uh, forward to install a, a temporary board made up of the ministry officials and uh, the teacher service commission. That is good enough because uh, uh, me also being a member of parliament and sitting on the committee of education, we visited the school today and we established several issues which I think the action of the CS is good uh, because uh, there was lapse in the security issues which the Board of Management should have taken care of. But then going back to your question, which actually highlighted the fact that this is coming immediately after the fire incidents, which I also attended and I stood with the community and the school at large during the, the sending off of those girls, is unfortunate. But I think part of uh, the residue effect of the fires in that school have also led to what happened in the school this time. Because as we visited the school, we noticed that they usually had a CCTV camera system, which unfortunately got banned during that particular period, and they had not replaced it to date. And therefore, the board stands responsible because currently security in schools is a responsibility of the government through the boards of management. And possibly that is why the CS decided to dissolve the board. So they don't have a CCTV system in the, in the schools. And moving forward, when I'll be making my concluding remarks, I would wish to say that the government must re remember that the entire security of our students in boarding schools is in their hands because now the parents don't pay money for 
for security in schools. And this is coming from the evolution of what was called the Kulemi Muiria Report, in which it advised on the number of uh, security officers to be in schools, the number of cooks to be in school, the number of buses, depending on the, on the population in the school, the size of the school, and so on and so forth. And therefore, principals or head teachers are limited on the number of uh, staff they may recruit as security officers within within the schools. So therefore, uh, I think the residue effect of what happened during the fire system has had its effect in what happened uh, right. in this particular incident. Right, and I want to bring in Mr. Wesaya, who's an education expert. And of course, this was a very, very shocking incident, sending chills down the spine of parents and the entire country, really. The question of how intruders can get into uh, you know, a student uh, hall. And what does it say about safety in our schools? And what, how can this be avoided? Uh, just to echo what my elder brother, uh, Honre Bomboko Milemba, has said, uh, as a parent, as a Kenyan, I stand with the school community. I empathize with uh, uh, those affected. And as a father, I shudder if that were to happen to my daughter. It's a sad thing. Uh, it is something that we should not allow to happen in Kenya to anybody, any young lady, any woman, anywhere, irrespective of where they are found uh, geographically in the country. But then going back to the hard issues uh, within the school, for me, uh, this squarely lies at the feet of the Ministry of Education and the Teacher Service Commission. Because in uh, averagely slightly more than a year, when we had the fire incident at the school, the Cabinet Secretary for Education led a very high-powered delegation into the school. They told us that investigations were happening, a report shall be released, action shall be taken. But looking at it and uh, looking now at uh, what the Honorable Member, who is now coming into Parliament for his first term, is telling us, is that this happened before he got into Parliament. He's gotten into Parliament, and what the Cabinet Secretary told us was going to happen has not happened because the report was never made public. So the actions that uh, the management of the school were to be held to account, we do not know as stakeholders, we do not know as taxpayers, we do not know as parents. And that is where the problem is. Because if this head teacher was in this school, this happened and it is a lapse of management and leadership because the ministry has very clear guidelines on the safety and security of children in school. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, if this head teacher was the one in charge, the lapse happened. But we let her continue being the head of the school as if nothing happened. The Honorable Member Milemba is now telling us that the CCTV system got burned down and it has not been you know, uh, repaired over a year down the line. That is a serious joke. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and before I cross over to uh, Florence, we want to deviate a little bit and cross over live uh, to the Ministry of Transport. I understand they uh, want to give a uh, statement regarding that uh, you know, plane that went missing, but we'll be going there later. And uh, we're we starting by for that. Let me bring in Florence Machio, who's joining us from town. And Florence, you talk a lot about safe spaces for children and girls in schools. What lessons are we especially learning from this as a country? What happened, the horrific uh, incident that happened at Moy Girls? I think what we are learning is that uh, we have not decided to take the lives of our children seriously. Uh, it also tells us we've reacted a bit late. But I also know that once now we start getting angry enough that our children are not protected, uh, then we will do what is right. And I hope that this incident, as bad as it is, will teach us to do something that uh, equality now raised last year when we spoke to young uh, children in different schools across the country and in Africa who expressed the need to have an opportunity to speak out when they feel that they're about to be violated or they're violated. 
It has taught us that also we do not listen to our children. And because we refuse to listen, then we're not able to mitigate some of these things that happen. So if only as adults, and when I say adults, I mean teachers, I mean the whole education system, I mean parents, uh, that we are responsible for what happens to our children, either by omission or by not doing what we are supposed to do and putting mechanisms in place to, uh, to protect children. Last year, we had a national dialogue. We brought to the attention of the nation that our children are speaking, and they're speaking around sexual gender-based violence. And we did not do anything about it. So I hope that this particular time, uh, the CS has already started making measures, and I'm glad it's going towards the right direction. I just hope that this can trickle. Whatever measures that go to Moy Girls uh, School will go to each and every school in this country public or not pub or, or private, right. so that our children can feel safe, A, to speak out, and B, to get the help that they need. Right. F Florence, I have to, uh, we have to uh, cut you short, but we'll come back to this conversation just shortly uh, because we want to deviate and a little bit and cross over live to the Ministry of Transport here in Nairobi, where a briefing on the missing aircraft has just started. Let's listen in. I was in charge of uh, publicity and communications in the State Department of Transport. Um, to my left is uh, Mr. Nicholas Bondo, who is the Director of Air Transport within <clears throat> the State Department, and uh, the Extreme Rents, a very important gentleman, Fred Kabunge. He is in the Air Accident Investigation Department, which um, uh, works in partnership with the KCA to pursue matters like this. So I want to start off <clears throat> by saying, um, ladies and gen gentlemen, um, as you are aware, the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority notify the public last evening on the report of the missing flight 208 Cessna registration number 5YCAC operated by Fly, Sachs and Root from Kitale to Nairobi. And I want to start off by saying that I'm a, we empathize with the families of passengers and crew who are missing on the plane, of the missing plane. We identify with the anxiety um, that they're experiencing and it's for this reason that we want to calm them by confirming that government is fully engaged in the rescue operation. The search and rescue operations that commenced yesterday resumed at 6 a.m. this morning. The focus of the search is concentrated in the Abadea ranges between Nyandarwa and Moranga counties, which are around 11,000 feet above sea level. This is only 2,000 feet below the peak of Mount Kenya, so it's very high. The government has set up a command post at Jambini Primary School to coordinate the search and rescue efforts. The Ministry of Transport, um, uh, Transport's Air Accident Investigation Department and KCA are working together with Kenya Wildlife Service, the Kenya Air Force, Kenya Police, Kenya Forest Service, and other state, state organs to coordinate the search. The search and rescue efforts have been hampered by rainfall and limited visibility due to the fog. You recognize um, uh, the Abadeas mountain ranges are very high. It is raining. There's a lot of fog. Now, due to the vastness of the terrain, the team has currently focused on an area site to try and narrow down on uh, the actual um, uh, accident sites. In addition, attempts have been made to track the phones of those on board, which also, while also deploying essential satellite facilities. The ground search by the mountain rescue team will continue, even as we sit in here. The government would like to urge the public to remain calm and not to speculate on the possible causes of the disappearance of the aircraft. And I wish to confirm that we shall be updating you with more information as and when it becomes available. This will be the official statement from the government. And as you can see, represented here are the principal drivers of the search and rescue operations. We really would like to urge um, uh, even as we wait patiently to avoid speculation that can drive fears and provide uh, misleading information. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Yes, a few questions. Okay. Yeah. The question is, what was the last communication that uh, uh, the control tower had? Mm. With, uh, the 
Yeah, well, I think the last year the DJ is the man on the ground to answer that, yes. That was at uh, 5 or 2, right? The last communication with the aircraft was yesterday evening at 5.02 uh, and that in my statement the time written there was 14.02 or 2 minutes past 2 but that was GMT time so local time was 2 minutes past 5 just want to make that clear uh, that's when we last communicated with the aircraft well, the aircraft were being uh, clearances, uh, being given clearances on uh, the approach into Nairobi, uh, Jomo Kenyatta. Was, was it previously uh, destined for Jomo Kenyatta? Or it was destined for Wilson Airport, and uh, it was decided at some point uh, to divert to Jomo Kenyatta, and we suspect that was because of the weather at the time. You recall last week the meteorological department of the Ministry of Environment uh, gave us a, a weather forecast that this week we're going to experience moderate to heavy rainfall in many parts of the country. And indeed, yesterday, the weather was bad. Uh, the, you, there was a lot of rainfall, low cloud, uh, that uh, sort of limitation. <coughs> Yes, a few more questions. Those guys actually to come to JK and Uh That is the information that we have for now. As, as you recall, the weather was, was terrible. So it, it may not have been a good idea to go to Wilson. It was decided to be diverted to Jomo Kenyatta. Any further questions? Yes. Was it only that you were focusing on the yeah, it, it was on the, on the correct routing. It was. Mm -hmm. Yes, madam? Mm -hmm. uh, ground search takes a very interesting profile. Whereas um, air search is dependent on the lights, ground search is really something that is carried out by trained mountain rescue people. And, sorry? Oh, sorry. Ground search is basically carried out by trained ma mountain rescue, I would actually say military personnel. And these are people who are, have a capability to operate during the day and night. And, 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 and really, as an assurance to the family, this is very important information because I've picked up a lot of announcements that um, we've seized the rescue operation. As a government, we have a commitment to continue with this throughout until we are able to reach these people. So it is continuing. Yeah, of course, with intermissions for a break, and they're human beings too, and yeah. <clears throat> any further questions? Is there any hope to find them alive? Um, in, this, in these sort of situations, you don't ever give up. You don't. And uh, we'll stay positive. Um, a, an accident is not necessarily a disastrous accident. And remember, the piloting, the piloting, is under licensed, well-trained, experienced pilots whose pr primary charge is to secure the lives of the passengers. So in situations like this, n never mind how difficult it is, I think their primary drive is to achieve as safe a landing as possible in these circumstances. And this is what is giving us hope, that uh, never mind uh, the circumstances, they must have landed somewhere reasonably safe, and um, uh, they are under good care. So we are, we are very hopeful and would like to encourage their families not to give up. Yes. Any further questions? So, we are okay now? Yeah, maybe, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you so much. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Right, that there was a press briefing by the PS for transport, Paul Maringa, regarding the missing aircraft. And they say that the search and rescue uh, mission is being conducted by a multi-agency, including the KCAA, KWS, K Kenya Forest Service, as well as the Kenya Police, and that they have set up a command post at Njambini Primary School. Uh, the search area is uh, around the Abadea ranges, but they say that the search and rescue uh, mission is being hampered by bad weather and says that they are also making attempts to track phones of those on board that flight 208 Cessna that went missing. The last communication with it was yesterday at about 5 p.m. So we shall keep following up on this developing story. Let's continue with our studio discussion here on the big story, talking about safety in schools following that really horrible incident that took place at Moy Girls uh, on Saturday, the rape of students there. And I want to come back to you, Honorable Milemba. And Florence was just speaking about uh, how we seem to be reactionary, really, when it comes to safety of our children in schools. And we have guidelines for safety. Talk to us about this and the state of implementation of this. Are schools really coming to par with what the guidelines stipulate? Thank you very much. The main guideline governing safety and security in our schools is the safety, safety, safety guideline in the high schools, which was created sometimes back about seven years ago. But it came at a time when uh, uh, security was based either on fires or was based on uh, that form of insecurity. And it did emphasize a little bit more the idea of not having grills around the dormitories, not having grills in the windows for the students, not having any grills, uh, grilled gates where the girls and boys sleep. And basically that was uh, to take care of the fact that in case of an emergency, these students need to be able to get out. But this uh, uh, document did not take into account the other security issues that uh, we did not envisage that would arise, like what arose in Moiga, in Moigal's Nairobi. And therefore, that document is extremely limited because it did not have even in mind the idea of CCTV cameras. It did not have in mind an attack that would occur right inside the dormitory itself. So it was basically based on school fires and emergency, emergencies that the students could use to escape in case that there was a problem in the dormitories. So we are really lacking in terms of that. And also still just there, I would wish to give more information. The Ministry of Education should do a little bit more. Today, we were dealing with the budget. And I wish I saw in that budget a uh, Ministry of Education proposing that they want this amount of money to be set aside to simply create security in our schools, especially the CCTVs and surveillance the cameras and so on and so forth. I did not see that. And then also the issue of how many teachers do we have in schools? And the danger is coming. And look at this, because we are moving from the, uh, the, the cognitive syllabus towards the competence-based syllabus. And in this competence-based syllabus, we shall require to train our students in skills. Such as skills include drama, music, and so on and so forth. The truth is that uh, non-registered teachers, hey, you Kenyans, non-registered teachers are entering our schools in, uh, in pretense or being hired by the boards of management in order to train drama, to train in music, to train football, to train the competencies, and that's where we are moving to. Today, I was on the floor of, of Parliament trying to uh, demand that we, I make an amendment so that the 16,000 teachers who are supposed to be employed to actually secure the 100% transition from primary to secondary be, be done. And I did also not see the money to employ more teachers in our schools. So we need to prepare adequately for every policy that we are coming up with in order to also secure our students. So the idea that non-registered teachers by the Teacher Service Commission are also in our schools training competencies is a real danger. I was happy when I was at Moy Girls today because the teachers were more than willing to go through the 
they, they were very cooperative with the investigations. They were also willing to go through the DNA tests, uh, especially the male teachers who were there. And even me, myself, being a teacher, if I were called upon for a DNA test, I would go for it. Because it's a chance for the real teachers registered by the Teacher Service Commission to actually absorb the, 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 the teaching community out of the embarrassment that possibly it could have been a teacher who was involved in this. So we would really want serious investigations to be done, if I may borrow from former phrases, let no stone remain unturned so that we know exactly what happened and that should be a basis and therefore I borrow from our sister in the other studio that this would be a basis on which to build in order to improve security in our schools. And, uh, Mr. Wesaya, uh, Milemba has talked about an outdated document which is guiding safety in our schools. What are some of the considerations we need to make even as we as a country need to think about updating this? What are some of the changing th trends that really need to be considered? Uh, if, if you look at uh, the school safety manual, and uh, if I'm right, I think it was developed around 2007, 2008, so it is 10 years old. Uh, it does not speak to our times. Uh, that document was developed by fire experts, uh, people who look at a school from the outside. And that is why I can tell you the only serious recommendation in that document is windows in a dormitory must open going out, the doors must open going out, because the assumption of the developer at that point was that if there is a fire, the learners needed to be able to escape from the dormitory. But as Honorable Milemba is pointing out, we have uh, new dangers in school. We have new issues coming out. And for us to manage this, we need to have the learner at the center of their own safety and security. Let us create a culture of safety and security where the learners are actively pointing out issues that affect them, then the management invests around those issues. And as my sister, uh, Machio, has mentioned, that these children are speaking, we are not listening. These children know where in that school you cannot go after sunset. These children know where you cannot go when it's still too early. But when they say it, we dismiss them. But in the process of just dismissing the children, we are also not holding the adults to account. And one of the things that you know, we need to know in the education sector is that with the increased government funding and government control of the education sector, accountability is more upwards. Accountability is more on the Ministry of Education and Teacher Service Commission because they have limited the participation spaces that parents and guardians were engaged in. When you take your child into a school, uh, there is a requirement that you cannot proceed beyond particular areas. So it means as a parent, you may not know where your child is sleeping. You may not know the distance between the dormitory and the abolition block because of the internal safety and security regulations. So as a parent, you hand over your child to the management of the school, headed by the board of management, where the head teacher is the secretary, and hope all will be well. But when something happens, and all you hear is that the board has been dissolved, a head teacher has uh, offered to retire early, what is that? What does that tell the parent whose daughter uh, was raped? How does that uh, help a child who got burns uh, out of a fire that the management would have prevented? How does that help a grieving family who lost a child in a school fire? But then one year down the line, the head teacher is still drawing a salary and says, I am offering to go on early retirement. What we need to do as a country is to redefine literally corruption. Because what is happening in Moi Girls is corruption. That somebody is employed, earns a salary, they do not do what they are supposed to do, and then they take early retirement. No. 
that is taxpayers' money, they need to be held to account. Okay. The board of management is actually appointed by the cabinet secretary. When you sit in a school, right. you are sitting there on the powers bestowed to you by the cabinet secretary. So okay. if you do not do what the cabinet secretary should do, then I don't see how the solution is a solution. All right. These people need to be held to account. All right. A question of accountability, very important. It's what many Kenyans are really, really angry about, uh, particularly when it comes to that school cap getting another tragedy just a few months after another. And we'll keep talking about that very important conversation we are having here on The Big Story. But we have, a t have to take a short break now. Uh, don't go too far. We'll have more into that when we return.